Hello everyone, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm doing the assembly tutorial for the four drawer cabinet. This project has been designed by Nicole Silhouette here on YouTube and I shall link her YouTube channel in the description box below. The four drawer cabinet is available as a digital cutting file in Nicole's Etsy store and also as a cutting die set from Andy's store also known as RLJ Lives, and I shall link both in the description box below. For the tutorial today, I use the digital cutting file. So I have all my pieces cut out and we'll go through them now. First up, we need two of these. We need this shape, just one of those. And this piece, you'll need to cut two of these. And they are grouped together in the digital cutting file. That makes up the outer box for the drawers. This piece here, you will need to cut this 12 times. We are going to do two lots of six, which will be glued, stacked on top of each other. You could, if you wanted to, get some thick chipboard and cut that to size. That is an option if you'd like, instead of cutting this shape out 12 times. That, of course, is up to you. In the digital cutting file everything is grouped together so it makes it easier for you. Next up we'll be talking about the base of the cabinet and you'll get two pieces like this that are shorter and two pieces like this that are longer. And there's also a rectangle shape that goes with that, those feet pieces. Next up we'll talk about the drawers. This shape here is the actual drawer and you'll need four of those. And you can see I've folded on all the score lines on all my pieces. This longer shape here, you'll need four of these two. These actually house the drawers. So the drawers slide in and out of this piece once it's put together. And it goes together basically like this. But we will talk more about that later. These other pieces here are smaller decorator pieces and I'll talk more about those later. So let's get started and put this together. So for my tutorial today, I am just going to be using glue for the whole thing and I'm using art glitter glue. We're going to put the drawer holders together first, which is this piece. And I'm going to apply glue to this top tab and then fold it in. And that's going to reinforce the top and the bottom of the housing of the drawers. So I'm just doing the same thing on the other end. This piece goes together very quickly and easily. So next in, I'm just going to fold these other tabs in, bend it around like so, and glue these smaller tabs on the sides to that larger tab and close up that shape. It does take a little bit longer when you're using glue, but you do have that wriggle room to move things around when you need to. So I'm just reinforcing that glue there with my bone folder. I'm going to do the same on the other end. Put glue on the side long tab and the side short tab. And then close that up. taking my time to make sure that I've got things lined up nice and straight and reinforcing with my bone folder. And that's the little compartment that the drawer will slide in and out of. So you'll go ahead and you'll do that for the remaining three pieces to make up your three drawer housings. I don't know of a better word, but it's the compartment that houses the drawers. And those three other compartments go together in exactly the same way. So I'll skip ahead now to where I've got all of the four compartments made to show you. So here are the four compartments made and you can see that they will stack on top of each other like so and we'll move on to making the actual drawers. So here are the four drawers ready to be put together. So we'll just work on one at a time. These are, again, something that's very easy to put together. You just need to put glue on these small tabs 
and join them to the side. So I'm just holding it there while the glue gets a good hold before moving on to the next tab. And you may need to bend that top tab back out of your way so that you can get to the tabs easily to glue them. So I'm just taking my time working my way around the drawer, gluing those small tabs to the neighbouring side piece. Taking my time and holding it in place until the glue takes a good hold. And make sure you've got good coverage of glue on your glue tabs. Then what will happen is we'll put glue on the inside of the top part of that tab and fold it in and that gives the drawer some strength. So I'm just taking my glue here, applying it to the inside of the top of that tab and folding it in and pressing it down against my work surface and giving it a burnish so it gets a good hold with the glue. And you'll go ahead and do that around all four sides. And you can see that our drawer is taking shape. Just making sure I'm getting good coverage with the glue and then folding that in, down in, in, inside to the drawer. Making sure it's got good hold in the corners there, giving an extra burnish, and that's one of our drawers done. And you can see that there's a little finger hole at the top there. And when you go to put it inside your compartment for the drawer, I'll just freeze frame it here so you can see. If you can see where the tab is, that we glued down to join the box together. You want that on the bottom. That's a smart idea to put it on the bottom as then the drawer won't catch as it's opening and closing. So if you've got that tab on the bottom there, your drawer will slide in and out nicely. If you have it in the compartment the other way around, then it's possible that it could catch on that tab. So that's why it's a smart idea to have it on the bottom. So you'll go ahead and you'll put your other three drawers together in exactly the same way joining the little tabs to the sides first. You can fold these top tabs out of the way so that it's easier access for you if you like. And work your way around the drawer. Making sure that all those glue tabs are taking a good hold. Then we're going to put the glue onto the top of these tabs and fold them in giving the drawer extra strength on all four sides. So I'm going to skip ahead now to where I have all the four drawers made and we'll go from there. So here we have our drawers all made and they're inside their compartments. It's now time to move on to these next pieces. So I've got these two pieces the rectangle and these two smaller rectangles with a single glue tab on one side. And we're going to join these larger pieces that have the three glue tabs there that you can see. We're going to put glue along the long side and we're going to attach the rectangle to it, the larger rectangle. It only goes one way, you're joining the long side of the rectangle to the long side of the piece there that's got the folds. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other piece with the folds making sure I've got good coverage of glue down that glue tab and attach the rectangle like so. And what we're making here is the outer edge of the cabinet or the out, outer side of the cabinet, the walls. So I'm going to bend along one of the folds outwards like so. I'm going to get the drawers here and show you what it's going to look like so you get an idea. It wraps around the drawers like so and you've got the doors closing at the front there. That gives you an idea of how that's going to look and fit. 
So it's now time to get these smaller rectangles with the single glue tab and they're going to attach to the shorter side of that rectangle piece, like so, forming the top and the bottom of the cabinet. So I'm just putting glue along the glue tab there, making sure I'm getting good coverage and I'm going to put that last one in place there, taking care to line it up and making sure the glue's getting a good hold before moving on. So I'm just maneuvering this now so that I can get easy access to those two smaller glue tabs there and they're going to attach to that top piece. And I did find it easier here to flip this piece over and push down onto my work surface. It was just easier to hold everything in place properly. So you can just see there, I've just flipped it and I'm going to press down from the inside. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. So one being the top and one being the bottom, obviously. So just applying the glue to the glue tab and pressing it into place and I will flip this over once I've got glue on both tabs. Reach in from the inside and then I'm going to flip it. And press down from the inside. You of course can do what's easier for you. It is a little bit more trickier when you're trying to film a tutorial. So that's what the outer side of the cabinet will look like and the drawers will be glued inside. But I'm going to take the drawers out of their compartments first. And then I'm going to glue these in one by one. And for the bottom one, I'm going to put glue on the bottom. And that just slides in nicely. It's a snug fit, so you could actually not put any glue if you didn't want to, but I'm going to glue it in just to be sure that it's in there nice and good. For And I'm making sure that I'm gluing them with that tab on the inside along that bottom edge. So for the next one, I'm putting glue on the bottom and the back. I did accidentally put it on the sides. Don't put it on the sides. See, I'm just wiping it off there where I put it on the sides because that's actually opened that part. So glue on the bottom and the back is plenty. So moving on to the next compartment, just on the glue on the top, uh, sorry, the bottom and the back and putting it into place. So we just have one more to put in and I'm going to put glue on the bottom and the back and I'm going to put it in here and this is where I think mm, I think I want it on the top as well so I then put glue on the top and put it inside in that last spot it is giving me a little bit of resistance but that's only because of I've got glue everywhere and I'm being mindful not to touch it and then spread it onto parts where I don't want glue but it fits in there nicely and snugly. So that's all our compartments in place and I'm just making sure that everything's looking good and that the doors will close nicely. Just giving them a press in between each of the sections to make sure they've got a good hold with the glue. Then I'm going to put my drawers back in place and they slide in and out nicely. And everything looks nice so I'll just put that to the side for now it's time to move on to the next part of the tutorial the base of the cabinet and this is where we've got the 12 rectangles in two lots of six like so we've also got this rectangle here and these pieces here we've got a short a long, a short and a long but first we'll get these back to these smaller rectangles and we'll glue one on top of each other so that they are six layers thick. One we'll use as the top of the cabinet and I'll put it aside for later 
and the other one I'll use for this construction of the base of the cabinet. But I'll just get this one out of the way first, making sure that all those pieces are nicely lined up on top of each other. Put it aside for later on and then move on to these other pieces here that we're going to use for this part of the base of the cabinet. Just making sure that these are lining up nicely on top of each other and then I'll put it to the side and move on to the feet part of the cabinet. I'll put that other rectangle, which is a little bit larger, off to the side there. The first piece I'm going to pick up is this short side. Don't worry about that tab that I'm showing there. We're going to join short, long, short, long. You could do long, short, long, short, but as long as you don't put two short sides together or two long sides together because that will really mess up the shape. So I'm just putting glue on that end tab and joining it to its other piece. So just getting that last one in place like so. And you can see here I've got short, long, short, long. Or, like I said before, you could have long, short, long, short. Just don't have two short or two longs together. Then I'm going to join the shape together. And you can see our base is taking shape here. Don't worry about these tabs on the bottom of the feet there. We'll do them later. We've got a couple of other things to do first before we create that part of the feet. So I'm taking this larger rectangle and that's going to be glued into position on the top of those glue tabs. So I'm going to put glue along all of the glue tabs at once, working quickly so that my glue doesn't dry, and smearing it out so I've got good glue coverage. And then I'm going to put that larger rectangle in place, and it fits on perfectly. And you can also turn it over and press it from the other side so that the glue gets a good hold. Which is what I'm just about to do now. So I've put it down onto my work surface and I'm pressing it down from the inside, making sure that the glue is getting a good hold along those glue tabs. And now it's time to get that other piece that's on the top left corner there and we're going to stick that on the inside edge of this base piece. I'm just burnishing where I had previously pressed down and it will go inside like that. This is the time that is best to put this in place before you finish off these feet otherwise it is difficult to get this piece into place. So to do it now is a smart idea. So I'm just putting glue on the back of that six layer thick piece and pressing it into place on the inside, which is the underside of the base of the cabinet. And that's going to give that piece some strength. Now we're going to put glue on these tabs here and fold them in like so. And it makes a nice little triangle shape like that. And that also gives the base a little bit of strength. So I'm applying glue to that tab, folding it in and pressing against the side like so until the glue gets a good hold. With the next piece, same thing, glue in and press it against the side. And what you will see on two corners, it only does it on two, is it hangs over a bit like so. And I'll just freeze it so you can see. All you need to do here is a little snip with your scissors. It's only a two second job if you don't want it to hang out like that just snip it off and it looks like so. It only does that on two corners and the other two are fine. So this is the other corner that I will snip. It's just that part just seems to overhang a little bit like that. I'm just going to snip it off. Good as gold. And I'm going to glue in that final tab into place. And that's our base of our cabinet coming along. It's nice and sturdy, so it will take the weight very well. 
and that's what it looks like from underneath with that support piece under there. So now is actually a good time, a really good time before you stick your drawers in place to put your decorator panel onto the base. Otherwise you won't be able to do it once you've glued your drawers on. So I'm just applying glue to the back of my decorator panel here and putting it into place. With the digital cutting file, you get all of your decorator panels for your piece. And with the die set, I'm not sure if you do, but they're easy enough to make your own decorator panels. So I'm just positioning the drawers as to how I'm going to like them on the base. I'm then going to apply a generous amount of glue here to the bottom of the cabinet. Then I'm going to take care to position it centrally onto that base piece. Making sure I've got even gap all the way around. So I'm just checking to make sure that's even and I'm just eyeballing it. And I'm just going to hold it like so until that glue has taken a good hold. Now I'm going to take that other piece that is six layers thick that's the top of the cabinet and I'm going to glue it on the top like so. Just moving the doors out the way. So I'm going to again apply a generous amount of glue here onto the top and then I'm going to put that top piece in place. Instead of using the six layers thick pieces you could as I said before use a piece of chipboard but you would want to wrap the chipboard up in the decorator layer paper that you were going to use. So I'm just holding this top and bottom in place till the glue gets a good hold. And you can see our cabinet there is really coming along, it's taking shape, it's looking nice. These two pieces here are for the front of the doors. It forms part of the decorator panels. So I'm going to put them aside for later. There's also these two pieces here and they form a nice decorative feature on the top of the cabinet. There's one with a glue tab and one without. So I'm just going to glue the one that has a glue tab to the very front of the top of the cabinet. There's only about an eighth of an inch between the edge and where I have glued this. And the piece that does not have the glue tab on it, I'm actually going to put that on the back. It's a strengthening piece. This one here will go on the back, but not yet. I'll put that aside for the time being. So that's the main part of the assembly of the cabinet done. I'm just showing you here the decorator panels that I'll be putting onto the cabinet. And with the digital cutting file, you get every decorator panel you could ever want. So I've just, I've not used all of the decorator panels, but I've got the ones that I want here. The sheet of paper I'm using to decorate it, my cabinet is from Kaisercraft called Everlasting and it's double sided and it's nice on both sides. So you can see I'm using both sides of the one sheet for my cabinet. So I've just got this in reasonably fast motion and I'm gluing in my panels, just putting that strengthening piece on the back of that top of the decorating piece. This is the decorator panel for that. I'm going to stick it into place. You can see I also put the top of the cabinet on and that hides the glue tab of that decorator piece that goes on the top. I'm now going to put the decorator panels for the base of the cabinet, the feet, into place. I do get a little bit sidetracked here when I'm putting the back panel on I put the back panel of the cabinet in place too and forget about my short sides. So I come back and put my short sides panels on Like I said before I didn't use all of the decorator panels because you can actually put decorator panels into the inside of the drawers too if you like. I didn't bother with that. I just did the decorator panel on the front of the drawers. The panels all go into position nicely and it's easy to tell which panel goes where. So 
So I'm just making my way around the cabinet, putting the decorator panels into place. And this is where this cabinet really comes to life nicely. I really do love this paper from Kaiser Craft, this everlasting sheet. It's very, very pretty. Very girly. So now I'm moving on to the inside and this is going to be the other side of that paper, which I think coordinates really well. So if you've got the die set that does not have any decorator panels, you, can, you have a couple of choices. You can cut the pieces out and then trim them, trim them down, or you could cut them directly from your designer series paper and that alleviates the need for the decorator panels. But as I said, with the digital cutting file, you get every imaginable decorator panel that you could ever need. And those two pieces just go on the inside like that. And that's all looking nice. So I put the front panel pieces on the drawers. Like I said, you could put the panels inside as well. If you wanted, I'm just leaving the inside of my drawers plain. I'm just sticking them all into place. Just getting that last one done. And then it closes up like so. So these other two pieces here that go on the front of the cupboard, cabinet I should say, I'm just putting the decorator panel into place But whilst I'm doing this, I'm not entirely sure I wanted the floral as the showing piece on this decorator panel. So I'm just checking to see what it's going to look like first. Once I've got that glued down. And this is where I'm sort of looking at it and I've put it on the cabinet and I've gone, oh no, it's gotten lost. I'm going to cut them again and stick it the pink side up. So I go ahead and I cut out the pieces again, the decorator panels, and I'm going to stick them just directly on what I've already glued with the pink side showing. And that happens a lot when I'm putting something together. That's why I don't generally put in the filming of how I decorate it because quite a lot I will change my mind halfway through and change what I initially thought I was going to do. And I'm sure we all do that when we're crafting. So I'm just getting those panels glued into place and then I put it on. I'm like, yes, that's how I want it to look. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these into place onto the front of the doors. Get one side done and get the other side done. Making sure I'm lining it up and that it's looking good when it's closed. So that's looking good. So I've got this other piece here. I was going to go floral and I think the pink looks better. It's time now to talk about the closure on the cabinet and I've got these small magnets here that I have in my stash, like so. I'm going to magnetise them to each other. And I'm just eyeballing where I think I'm going to put it. And to fix the magnets to the paper, I'm using these small glue dots I have, the 3 16th of an inch or 5 millimetre that I have. And I'm going to put one of those glue dots on each side of the magnets that are joined together. So I'm leaving them joined and putting one glue dot on the top and one glue dot on the bottom. So I'm just going to eyeball it here, not measuring, just going to put it about there. I'm going to leave the release paper on the one on the top for now. And for that 
decorate a piece for the top there I'm going to use these thin foam strips that I have you could use foam squares or foam dots whatever you've got and I'm just putting that on one side and that will go into place like so just going to take the backings off and I'll line that up against the side edge of the door making sure that the foam tape is not showing on the other side take the backing off the top of the top magnet and then press it down into place and it's a nice magnetic closure so that's the cabinet and it opens up nicely like so and the drawers open very nicely and it all closes up nicely like that so I went ahead off camera and I did decorate it a little bit more with some flowers this took me a while which is why I didn't film it and I'm happy with the way that this turned out just giving you a look all the way around and then it's just one finger open and you've got your drawers and they all open and close beautifully and then the cabinet closes up with the magnetic magnetic clasp I did make another one of these little cabinets prior to this tutorial like I would normally and this one I made out of white cardstock with a grey floral patterned paper for the outside and for the inside and the decorator panels for this one I used a Swiss dots embossing folder on white cardstock as the coordinating one and I think that looks really lovely for this cabinet too so that's my tutorial finished for today I hope you've enjoyed watching and that you feel inspired to make one of these little cabinets they really are quite sweet don't forget to check the description box down below for the links that I've previously mentioned and if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel I would really love that too. Thanks very much for watching today. Have a great day and until next time it's bye for now.